love selling from that point of view for uh, the sea and the beaches and the coast and um, uh, so it's uh, really uh, if for in summer Salento and Puglia in general uh, yes are the main among the main tourist destinations in Italy really and not just for Italians but also for foreigners belong to what we call in Italian la Grecia Salentina Grecia because we are surrounded by the sea we have two seas endless fishing ports Adriatic and Ionian along the Adriatic and the Ionian coast so that's why the fishing industry is really very very important in Puglia here until 1700 there was just the mainland, the countryside and a bridge connecting the mainland to the island. Between the old town and the new town there's this horrible building, we call it the skyscraper of Gallipoli. Today, as you can see, everybody is sleeping, nobody is out, everything is closed. Why? Because it's a national holiday, April 25, it's the day of liberation. We say that it is the name of this national holiday is La Festa della Liberazione, the Liberation uh, Day. Uh, liberation from fascism so it's uh, the liberation of Italy uh, after the war 1945 1945 uh, the region of Puglia is uh, covered with stones and rock and uh, that is why very very often every day actually you will see scattered all over the countryside those stone dwellings many stone dwellings uh, built with this uh, particular technique building technique building method the dry stone technique and they are very very simple they soon you'll see some of them, of them stone dwellings that were built by local peasants local shepherds farmers uh, to be their temporary shelter or a storage a hut a barns and so used by local shepherds or peasants and now they are also very characteristic of our countryside and the day after tomorrow yes day after tomorrow when we go to albero bello we will go on talking about that those st stone dwellings because you will see the trulli the dwellings with a cone-shaped roof well they belong to these very very large primitive stone dwellings existing all over the region but they have a, a different 
story. I will tell you the story why they were built in that way and when and who. But we will do that the day after tomorrow. Roman times on. And today, nowadays, the region of Puglia is considered is the main Italian producer of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, uh, exported all over Europe, all over the world. And just to give an idea, well, Puglia producer, produces around 40%, 40% of the Italian olive oil. So it's a Now we go north. We won't go south anymore, but north. Soon see Egnazia, the archaeological area. You can see part of the Messapian walls. Yeah, you are going to visit. This is the Roman city of Egnazia. Then you can see some fields, cultivated fields, because most of Egnazia is still underneath, under these fields private properties so it was not possible to find to carry out excavations all over the area only a small part of Egnazia was excavated by the archaeologist from Bari's University not Lecce but Bari sulla mia sinistra vedete un recinto tutto intorno invece avremmo visto i corpi all along the wall Puglia uh, is known all over Italy uh, thanks also to these uh, hundreds of years old olive trees they can also be 1000 2000 years old most of them are in this part of the region the name of the hotel is Palazzo Virgilio from the name of this poet, Virgil, who died in Brindisi. Buongiorno. I also mentioned quickly how important agriculture in general was important uh, in uh, ancient times, but actually still nowadays. You have to know that the region of Puglia, the entire region of Puglia, is one of the most agricultural areas of Italy, together with Sicily. You have to know that over 90% of the land of Puglia, which is considered suitable for the cultivation, is actually cultivated. For instance, the region of Puglia is known for its um, table grapes and wine grapes. We are among the main Italian producers of wine, red, rosé, white. peppers, cauliflower, and fennels, and fava beans, and uh, uh, broccoli rabe, 
peppers and so on and so on. That's why at lunch and dinner we very often have these local vegetables, grilled eggplants, grilled zucchini, for instance, and peppers and tomatoes because they are from this area, they are from Puglia. Loco, so we are not in Spain, so the meaning is not crazy, <laughs> loco, loca, but loco comes from luogo, meaning the place, the round place. This is the round town, because the old town of Loco Rotondo has this circular plan it. and it surrounds the main church, what we can see from a distance, what we are going to see soon, the church dedicated to the patron saint of, uh, of Loco Rotondo, St. George. And so that is the characteristic of the town, Loco Rotondo, the round town. And it is completely whitewashed. We won't see it truly in the old town of Loco Rotondo. They are only out of the town, in the countryside, as you can see, uh, or in, uh, in the middle of the new town. But in the old town, we won't see truly at all. But a charming little town with narrow streets and all the buildings are whitewashed.
little strudel for you. With this, uh, yeah, what you got? His moustache. <laughs> his moustache and his beard. So when he went to the door. Where are you from? America! America! Victoria, these are white grapes, but we also have black table grapes exported all over Italy. Very sweet, very good. We are the main Italian producer of table grapes. Wave out of the wine shop. Did you have a good time? Yes. <laughs> Wave if you had a good time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wave if you can walk straight. <laughs> so before the nap starts, so now we go back <laughs> to the hotel to Brindisi and it takes around one hour. You can relax and later, later we will have a nice cooking demonstration at the hotel. At six, at the hotel. These are the buildings to the left. These are the buildings I was mentioning, all of them built in the 30s, all of them during the fascism. So this building in front of us to the right, immediately after the palm trees, with this pink orange facade, was one of the three theaters of the city. Politeama Margherita, Teatro Margherita. This is the, one of the main avenues of Bari separating the old town, which is up to the right, from the new town to the left.
remember from here the ferries go to Albania? Yes, yes. Albania, Greece, Greek islands, Turkey, Croatia. Yeah. The, the, the name of the singer was Domenico Modugno and his most famous song was Volare, Volare, oh, oh. yeah, he was born here. USA, USA, America. USA, America. We're from America. <laughs> oh. So, these are my last minutes with you because I'm <laughs> Uh, you, I'm not staying in uh, Brindisi uh, this evening, I, I will uh, take in uh, yes, more or less one hour, I will take a train from Brindisi railway station to Lecce, I will go back to Lecce, it's just half an hour. And uh, so I would like to tell everybody that it was uh, really a great pleasure to to be with you, to show everybody my beautiful region, I really hope you enjoyed and you enjoyed this region, Puglia, the Puglia region. So it was really a great pleasure. Thank you for your attention and you, you, are, you were such a really a great group. I had a good time with you. <laughs> Grazie. But anyway, you know, today I want you to be very careful when we reach Matera because when it is wet, you know, in Matera it is very slippery. The province of Matera and the region Basilicata. So you know in Italy we have 20 regions in Italy that are like states, like it, it was a federation of states, you know? each one has its own government and each region is divided in provinces. But most of them have still traces of frescoes inside. Frescoes from the Byzantine times. So we're talking about more than a thousand years ago. This was the place where the monks settled. You know, there were monks coming from Greece, from Northern Africa, settling here.
village, Castle Mezzana is a very small village, medieval village because Castle Mezzano was born during the 11th century when the Normans built the castle. Because Castel Mezzano means the castle in the middle, because it, it was built on a peak that was between two other castles that were on other mountains. You know? That's why Castel Mezzano, the castle in the middle. Now the castle is gone, unfortunately, because uh, it collapsed after, after an earthquake in 1600s and then it was dismantled by the people of the village that were that, that used their its, its stones basically to build other buildings, houses and other things. Because by the end of the 1600s they didn't need any more fortress there. This cloud here. And a zip line goes from Castel Mezzano to Pietra Pertosa. That's the name of the other village. And then from Pietra Pertosa back to Castel Mezzano. Castel Mezzano is uh, at the border, right at the border of the National Park. That place is called as well the Dolomiti Lucane. You know, you know the Dolomites in the Alps. No? They, from the distance, the peaks where Castel Mezzano is could uh, remind you know the the Alps, the Dolomites for the shape, but actually the rock is different. Now we are moving to the Agriturismo, but on the way we'll stop at the Parco della Palomba, that is a, an open air sculpture park that is set in an old quarry, one of the, those old quarries we saw on the way in.
in agriculture technically is a farm, a working farm, where there is a restaurant as well, and where they have as well apartments for rent for the guests. And this is a real agriculture. They produce their, their products here. The temple is right here, like 50 meters away. On the way now, we'll see only very recent villages. Like this one, look on your left, that's Metaponto, the new Metaponto, that was born between the 50s and the 60s. There was nothing here, as I told you. This was a marsh, this was swamp, swamp, basically, until the 50s. Because, as I told you already, the Romans cut all the trees clear cut, they did a clear cut on the hills. Look here on your left, this watchtower from 1200. This was built by Frederick II. You can see the, the original tower, the very first tower in the middle, the round one, is from 1239. And uh, it is uh, for sale. 30 million, no really, 30 million euros. Those are rice fields around you, right and left. They grow rice here. And they grow it in a special way because uh, they don't, the, the fields are, are not always flatted. You know, they flood them, then they plow them, then they plant the rice, and then they flood the fields time to time. I mean, it's not always covered with water like in China. And the cultivation of rice here started in 1200s by the will of Frederick II. There is a cloud on top of it. Probably it has been erupting. It is erupting because it erupts every 20 minutes. But the lava goes always on the other side of the island. Because in order to make extra virgin olive oil, extra virgin means that as the olive oil has less than one percentage of acidity, to make extra virgin olive oil, you need to pick the olives when they are still green, so in October. And that's why in uh, most of the places they keep the olives, the olive trees, low, you know, small, so they can reach the branches. 
Calabria produces the 30% of the whole Italian olive oil production. And Sicily is on the other side, only two miles away. Today is very calm, but usually it's very rough here. Strong winds. Anyway, there are very strong currents. And the fault line goes right <laughs> through the strait. So that's why it's a very seismic area. People in Messina decide to camp on the beach, you know, because they thought it was the safest place. Because nobody, nothing can fall on your head, basically on the beach but instead the main earthquake the epicenter was in the sea just below Calabria so in the water so Reggio was shielded by the cave instead the tsunami hit Messina and drowned all the people on the beach that's why 80,000 people died there Marina Grande, the beach here. Then at the top is the quarter called San Giorgio. Bring your whispers so we won't get lost. but this village is right in the center of the Gulf but it's the Gulf that gave the name to the town anyway now we are entering the Atlantic State
gelato homemade, made each one of those gelaterie as his own laboratory. They make their own gelato. We are going to the best one, obviously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Santa Severina, if you look on your left, in front of us to the left, there is a village at the top of a flat hill, that's Santa Severina. I don't know if you can see the castle as well to the left, but anyway, the one will be closer. Santa Severina is at the end of the valley, overlooking the whole valley, controlling the valley, but at the same time, it was part of a network of castles and towers. Each one of those villages, you see this one in front of us to the right, the one to the right in the distance, each one of them had the fortification. It was a belt, because this was the border between the Norman territories here, from those hills to the sea, and the Longport territories, from those hills to the mountains. So the mountains were in the hands of the Longports. We are talking about the end of the 11th century. Still those mountains, you know, this was still the Normans were conquering the area. And also this was already the border between the Byzantines and the Longbirds. So that's why the Normans Just a second. Hold this and just point. It's already videoing. Oh. Just hold it and just hold Video. it on us. Don't touch anything. <laughs> just, just hold. Just point it. Hold. It's already running. Ah, it's already running. Oh. Everybody yeah. wave. <laughs> 